Welcome to sections 21.2b and 21.3. So in the last lecture, we talked about this alkene 2-butene, but I didn't give you guys the whole story. And that has something to do with the properties of a double bond. So what you guys will recall, when I talked about alkanes, I said that they were sp3 hybridized. Here are my sp3 orbitals. And so if I were to draw this structure out, what you guys have is a single bond between the two carbons. What's more is I just have an overlap of two sp3 orbitals. So what this means is this molecule can rotate around that single bond. Now when I have a double bond, I am sp2 hybridized. So the first bond in the double bond is the overlap between an sp2 orbital and an sp2 orbital. But the second bond in the double bond is the overlap between an unhybridized p orbital and an unhybridized p orbital. What this means is that when I have a double bond, I cannot rotate around that double bond. And the reason is, is if I rotate, I will break one of the bonds in the double bond. So the take home message is, whenever you have double bonds, you're not allowed to rotate around those double bonds. As a consequence of this, what you'll find is that you will lock structures into certain positions. Let's take a look at 2-butene and the two ways that it can be arranged in space. If I were to draw a line through my double bond, what you'll see is the molecule on the left-hand side, you'll see that the CH3 groups appear on the same side. Because they appear on the same side, I can label this as cis-2-butene. Now, there is an alternate way that I could have drawn this out. Again, let's draw a line through my double bond, and now what you'll see is the CH3s appear on different sides. So to name this compound, I can label this as trans-2-butene. These two molecules are different molecules. These are geometric isomers. I have a cis isomer and I have a trans isomer. Now the cis and trans do not refer to 90 and 180 degree angles like we saw in the previous chapter. The cis refers to the same side and the trans refers to opposite sides. And what I'm talking about is the same side of a double bond or the opposite side of a double bond. Because these are two different molecules, they are going to behave differently. They have different chemical and physical properties associated with them. Now, double bonds can be involved in cyclic structures. And what you guys will find is that all this naming follows the same ideas. It is a very systematic approach. If I go ahead and have a double bond in a cyclic structure, what you guys will notice is I will put cyclo in front of it. So here we have a six-membered ring with a double bond, so cyclohexene. Now when you number your ring, remember that the double bond gets priority. So one of the carbons in the double bond is going to be labeled one. The second carbon has to be the other carbon in the double bond. So you want to number through the double bond. Now, be sure to make sure your double bond gets the lowest numbers possible. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and label this as carbon number one. I go through the double bond to carbon number two, three, four, and now I see my ethyl substituent is on the fourth carbon. Let's go ahead and talk about the reactions of alkenes and alkynes. The important thing to remember with these things is my double bond is my reactive center. That's why we classify them as different organic compounds. Now, for double bonds, what we're going to do are we're going to do something called addition reactions. Addition reactions mean I'm going to add something to my alkene. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add across a double bond. So the first type of reaction that you guys see is a hydrogenation reaction. And so a hydrogenation reaction means I'm adding H2. And since it's a double bond, I want to add H2 across my double bond. So what that means is if I have my double bond here, I want to break the double bond and make it a single bond. And then I'm going to add the new molecule across the double bond. So in this case, I'm going to break the hydrogen into two parts and put one hydrogen on each part. I can do the same thing with a halogenation. So remember, the halogenation is something we talked about. This is adding a halogen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, onto an organic molecule. When I did it with an alkane, we did a substitution reaction. But since we are doing this with double bonds and alkenes, we are doing addition reactions. So I have my double bond. I'm going to break my double bond. And in this case, I'm adding a halogen across it. So I'm going to put a BR on one side and a BR on the other side. Notice I'm not substituting any of those hydrogens out for a BR. I'm simply adding a molecule across that double bond. Now I'd like to talk about section 21.3. Now, this section talks about a specific class of double bond compounds. These compounds are called aromatic hydrocarbons. Now, aromatic hydrocarbons means that I have double bonds in a cyclic structure where they are in resonance. You've already come across one of these, and one of these compounds is benzene. Benzene is considered an aromatic hydrocarbon. When you study organic chemistry later, they will give you more restrictions on identifying what an aromatic compound is. But for this class, all you have to note is that we have double bonds in a cyclic structure that are in resonance. When those double bonds are in resonance in a cyclic structure, it imparts special properties to that structure. Because they have special properties, we use the name of these compounds. So instead of calling it hexatriene, we will retain the name benzene. And so benzene becomes the parent name. So if I put a substituent on it, like a methyl group, methyl benzene. If there are more than one substituent, just make sure you use benzene as the parent name and go ahead and follow all the rules that you guys have done before to label out the substituents and to tell me which locant they're on. What's special about the aromatic compounds is that these double bonds in resonance in the cyclic structure make the carbon-hydrogen bonds very strong. So they do not do addition reactions. Instead, because I have strong bonds, I will have substitution reactions. So let's take a look at this. What you guys have here is benzene. Now remember, there's a hydrogen on each one of these vertices. And if I were to do a halogenation reaction, meaning that I try to add chlorine to this, instead of going ahead and adding across the double bond, this is not going to happen. I will not add across a double bond in an aromatic compound. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute my hydrogens out. So what you'll see here is this top hydrogen becomes a chlorine. If I add HNO3 to one of my aromatic compounds, what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute out a hydrogen for an NO2. I can also add an alkyl substituent to my benzene. To do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add aluminum chloride plus an alkane with a halogen on it. 
and we'll learn about these as the hollow alkanes. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute a hydrogen for that alkyl substituent. So again, just to remind you, substitutions for aromatic compounds, not additions. I hope that made sense to you, Chem1C, and remember to stay safe.